Hi, I want to welcome you to our first ever debut of the Wolf Den. And uh, it's a great night. We've got Guardians of Children and Tiffany, the manager from Two Rivers. So without further ado, I want to bring in Tex. Tex, come on in. Yeah, What's going on, bro? Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Have a seat. And uh, first of all, why don't you let me know about yourself, your club, anything that you want to get out to the viewers. Guardians of Children is, is an amazing organization. We started here in San Antonio 13 years ago. We're, we're now up to uh, 52 chapters in the United States. There's 14 in Canada. Um, sadly, we, we, we wish we didn't exist, but the fact that we do and we get to make an impact on the lives of kids is it's fulfilling. I mean, we all do this for free, but we get paid in the smiles of our children every day. Well, tell me a little bit more about uh, the San Antonio chapter. I mean, you're here in San Antonio, Texas. Tell yeah, about it. Uh, we started here 13 years ago in 2006. Um, there was a need when the founders founded this organization that they saw that uh, we not only needed to help kids that were abused, but we needed to get out in the public and help the public understand how to recognize and react to child abuse so they could also kind of make a difference too because we just can't be the only ones helping abuse kids. There's so many eyes out there in the world and if they all knew what to look for, they all can make a difference too. So we started 13 years ago and it's just been a wildfire ride. Uh, we've Every year it seems we blossom and gain a new organization, a new chapter onto our fold. Um, in Texas, it just, it, we, we, we blossomed to Texas and now we've started to overshoot into northern states, the east coast, the west coast, and, and then we started a Canada chapter about eight, nine years ago where now Canada's 14 chapters strong and growing. Wow. So it's it's a phenomenal organization, man. We do, we do a heck of a lot and the fact that I just said phenomenal is a testament because I hate that. So in Texas alone, we have 15 chapters. Wow. Since we started here, we've just kind of grown, and, and this is really the founding of it all. And so with 15 chapters founded, and then it just every year, like I said, we just seem to gain a new city that's interested. Even in Texas, um, we've, we've added two cities in the past three years to Texas, and now we're looking at adding uh, another one in the coming coming future soon, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a great organization. We do, we do uh, quite a few different things I don't think the public quite realizes. Not only do we support kids that are actually have an active court case, um, we deal with kids that are past the court case as well. Uh, we don't just cut the kids off once they're through court. So most of the people don't understand that we're not only there to help the children and those families through the court process, to, because that's a, that's a horrible process. It takes three to four years for most cases to actually go from the date the child makes an outcry and says, I was abused to the date that they actually get to testify and give their statement. It takes three to four years, and those kids for that time, you know, the number one lie I hear parents say is, we need this court case to be over so our kids can heal. And what I tell the parents every time I hear that, I tell them, you don't need to wait until court's over to heal. Because there's no reason you can't start the healing now, because when that child testifies, they gotta be strong, they gotta be past this, because it's gonna be tough to talk about. And so, one of our credences that we teach all of our kids and kind of a short quip that we give them is we want you to be a victor, not a victim. And we, we teach that from a not just from a sympathetic point of view, but from an empathetic point of view. Most of us are victims of child abuse. I was abused when I was 13 years old. I didn't say a word for eight years sure. um, until I walked into a, a chapter meeting one day and I was asked why was I there. That was the first words out of my mouth. I was sexually abused when I was 13 and I want to make a difference. And so we try and teach our kids that, that this mindset, not just by, by the thought of it's a good idea, but we live it out and showing them because they all know our stories and they get to hear us talk about our stories. But then the other side of us is we, we try and get out in the public and teach the public what, what they can do if they see if they see something that looks like child abuse. If, if, they, if they even suspect it, because most of the time the abusers, they're your next door neighbor. They're the guy across the street. They're the guy that sits on the school board. You know, They're the person that you would have never ever suspected is doing that to a child and it's doing it but all the signs were there but everyone thought no he wouldn't do that so that's that's in short kind of what we do wow amazing i mean i got the the, the honor of hanging out with you guys uh for several little you know different events and stuff and i gotta say i mean you guys are true brothers for one another i mean you work collectively together for such a good cause absolutely and i just uh, and i've said that on facebook several times i mean i just i just honor that so um, now you got a huge event coming. Tell right. us about that. So all of this takes money. You know, print material for production, for, for, inter for interacting with these kids. You know, we, we put on big events for these kids to get together because we found that kids, when they're together, they don't have to talk about their abuse, but just knowing the fact that they're not alone 
is a huge benefit for their psychological mental state. So we put on these big events for throughout the year, so we get all these kids together. On average, we deal with about 70 families. So that's, you know, when you count mom, dad, and everything, we run about 200 at a time each of these events. And so every year we host a, uh, an annual fundraiser. Uh, we raffle off a motor, brand new motorcycle every year. Uh, and it's this year we're doing it a little different. Instead of just raffling off one bike, we're actually raffling off the winner's choice. Whoa. The winner gets to choose between a 2019 Street Glide or 2019 Road Glide. Wow. And we've had the people you know, who buy tickets who don't ride motorcycles, and that's completely okay because Javelina has guaranteed us that if the person who wins doesn't ride a bike, they will buy it back for the cash value of the bike, which last year was $15,000. This year, it's somewhere a little closer to twenty. We're not, We don't really know until that day comes, but... Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for a ten dollar chance, and this is how we raise all our money. Just this one event each year, and that's on September fourteenth at Havelina. And the best part about this year is we've made it exceedingly kid friendly. Oh, we have good. a free carnival out in the front of Havelina for kids that come. Wow! Absolutely no cover charge, no no you know twenty five dollars all day. You can ride wristbands, none of that. It is exactly. completely for you. Show up with your kids. You can walk in and enjoy the carnival for free. We're going to have a DJ for the kids. We're going to have popcorn. We're going to be giving away sodas. They'll have food options. In the back side of Javelina, we're going to have, we've got about 30 vendors right now. We've got two live bands. Wow. Uh, has agreed to provide all the adult beverages for the entire day for anyone who comes. Hey. So, <laughs> beverages, <laughs> free entertainment. I mean, it's, it's, it's really the only way we raise money, but we figured this year we would do it in a way that was would honor our 13th anniversary in San Antonio. I can't begin to tell you how excited I was to understand and learn not only what y'all are about, but what you guys do for the community because, I mean, this event coming up, I mean, if you don't go, I don't even know what you're doing. You're missing out. You're missing out, exactly. So, uh, to close up, I mean, I just want to see if you got any stories, if you got anything, maybe of the, the children that you've dealt with so that our viewers can understand, like, what exactly you do on a specific nature with particular children. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, we've, we've been told by CPS caseworkers and uh, various counselors that in the one hour we spend with kids that they don't see that much improvement in the kid's behavior in six weeks of counseling. Wow. Um, we one child, um, Tink, and I can say her name because that's our given road name to her. Only she and our chapter will know who we're talking about. Uh, but Tink was, was absolutely afraid of her front yard. She slept with three nightlights on for fear of her perpetrator coming by the house. And he had been, he had made frequent appearances driving by late at night, middle of the day. Intimidating, trying to, you know, do what perpetrators do, be jerks, um, as PC as I could say. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, so, we would routinely ride by Tink's house, let her know we were there. We had a, a secret way of letting her know that we were passing by. Um, awesome. We periodically visit at night. We, we, give, we give all of our children stones that are unique to them. Yes. Um, just little pebbles that are shiny rocks, their favorite colors. Tink's happen to be a, a particular color. So we would drop those stones in her yard periodically when we were passing by. If she middle of the night, just to let her know if she ever found them, we were there. Well, Tink actually found them one day. She was out playing in her front yard under mom's supervision, which was the only way she'd go out front. Right. And she happened to come across all these stones in her yard. And she started to realize that we've been stopping by. And she told her mom she picked them all up. And she went to her mom and said, look, mom, the guardians are coming by at night and leaving these for me to find. So now fast forward from a child who is afraid of even playing in the front yard alone, sleeps with three lights on. I mean, we're talking full bedroom lights. Now, according to mom, she sleeps with one little night light on. <laughs> and and this is in six weeks of us interacting with her. And now she's had a camp out in the front yard, not once, but twice. She slept in a tent in the front yard. Really? Yeah. These kids are exposed to things that we have not even clear what's going on. Right. So when these, and, and these kids, I assume, have a hotline, or who, who do they call, or how do they, I mean, in case there's viewers and kids out there watching, what do they do? Well, here's the thing that we try and tell our children that we run into whenever we do public speaking engagements and talk to kids. Mm -hmm. You can tell any adult, any adult, what's going on in your world. Right. And I promise they, that adult will know who to contact to get the help. And if, if, if an adult's out there that doesn't know what to do, they can contact us. We will gladly tell them. But for kids, the biggest thing that they fear is not being believed. And if I could tell a child any one thing, it's that you would be believed. Because the whole reason I never came forward, I didn't feel like I would be believed. I see. I, think, I thought everyone would just call me a liar, would say, oh, that didn't happen to you. You're lying. You're making it up to get attention. 
And had I only known that there were people who would have believed me, I would have come forward and said something. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing we try to tell our kids is just tell somebody. Go to your counselor. Go to your principal. Go to go to a teacher. Go to another parent. Go to the neighbor. Tell somebody what's going on, and I promise you'll get the help you need. Yeah. And if you can do that, you will be believed because. I, I wish I would have done that so people would have believed me, but I'm glad I get to be here now and tell people that I believe you. That's the biggest thing we advocate to our kids whenever they come to us is no matter what you say, we believe you 100%. Um, I mean, it's such a testimony. Uh, the text, I just can't, I mean, I'm honored uh, for you to come and, and, and share your testimony and, and do what you do. I mean, and this guy, I mean, I got to tell you all, I love his arm. You gotta show them arm, man. Show them. Which the arm. one? The, 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 the arm with Guardian on it. Oh yeah. I mean, the that one. on the video was awesome because when I rolled into that, I mean, I thought, such a guardian. He's a guardian not only to the kids but a guardian in, in society, in my opinion, because you know ultimately, morals, values, integrity, those things are what guardians of children are about. Absolutely. You know, we have three core principles that we uh, our chapter operates on: valor, integrity, and truth. Yeah. And, and we really try and aspire to those every day in what we do and how we behave. And, and it's not always easy. You know, we're humans. We flawed. You know, we'll we'll speed and we'll cut somebody off every now and then. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we do it as a large group when we're on our way to a, a child who's called us, and you know, we don't mean to to hurt anybody's feelings, but we really try and live by those principles because we feel like that's the core of what we're trying to teach kids. Because we don't want to raise. You know, this generation of, of abuse kids has got to come out of the victim mentality and they've got to enter adulthood victors of their situations, not victims, because you and I both know adults who are still living in that victim mentality because they never got closure for what happened to them when they were a child. So we really want to teach these kids that you can get past this. You can get to a point where you don't have to be a victim. You can be a victor. In fact, one of the best stories I think I can tell you is we had a recent case that went to trial and uh, the perp pleaded guilty because he knew the evidence was overwhelming. And our, our little guardian that we call the children that we work with, yes. she got to give her impact statement. All right. And so she got up on the stand and uh, had a great opening line and led into what she felt and what her emotions were that day. But she ended it with this, which I thought was incredibly impactful. And I had a conversation with her the day before, uh, that night before I talked with her. And she said that the last time she saw him, she was afraid. And I said, but you got to remember something. You're the one that's free. He's the one that's now a prisoner. He tried to make you a prisoner, but the tables have turned because you're the one that's free and he's the prisoner now. So the last line she gave him is she said, you tried to make me a victim, but I'm a victor now. Wow. And that for us was a solidified yeah. truth that we've made a difference in that one child's life. And if we only make in 13 years a difference in one child, yep. by God, it was worth it. But I can tell you, we've made a difference in a lot more than just one. I'm, I'm very proud to say we have done a, a fantastic job of making an impact on lives. Man, well, God bless you. I mean, I seriously, I mean, I, uh, y'all know I'm man of Christ and things like this. God has truly blessed you. And I tell you, man, I'm I'm, I'm just honored to have you here on the show. And, and uh, man, I'm let, let this, let everybody understand what Guardian Soldier is about because this is real. This is true, good nature, brotherhood together i've seen them in several occasions these guys and their passion for children epic all right i want to close it up uh text man thanks again for coming and uh man i can't thank you enough for, for coming out we look forward to coming out to the event absolutely i know my wife savannah and i we're going to be out there and uh um hey man win that bike i don't know i bought a ticket maybe you never know only take one exactly all right i want to introduce uh tiffany to your tavern and come on in. First of all, Tiffany, why don't you tell us about you and the bar, maybe some history about it? I'm the bar manager at Two Rivers Tavern. Been there for going on three years. We've been open going on three years as well. Um, Mike and Min Harris, retired military family, awesome people. Awesome. They've been keeping it going. They do a lot, try to have a lot of events for everybody to keep everybody entertained. So they're great people. It's a great bar. Plus, we have our ghost pepper infused tequila, which everybody Ooh. loves. Ooh. Tell us about that. Because you all made that, right? I mean, you invented yes. that. Yes, we, we have an infused shut that we have to make that nobody knows all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. So we make it quite often, sits there for a few days, and wow. we serve it up. One wow. of our highest selling shots. Saturday, we have Texas Radio, which everybody knows about these guys who've been around for years as well. Oh, wow. Um, never cover 
That's awesome. So even better, we have great drink specials. Even our happy hours, 250 Crown and 250 Jack. Yeah, totally Nobody better. can beat that. Nobody can beat that. And also we open at 7 a.m. Monday through 7 Saturday. <laughs> Sunday. Go the next day, huh? Yeah. So That's we're awesome. open all the time, 10 o'clock on Sundays. Oh, and then Tiffany, uh, why don't you let me know about the rest of the week? What else you got planned for the next two weeks? Anything else? Dragonfly and Texas Radio. Next Thursday, we have something for the ladies. Oh. And we're having a male review. Oh. So, Texas, we're gonna are you in it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we're having bartend. He's going to be a bartender. Oh, <laughs> so, let us know how uh, the ladies can get tickets or how, what's the process? So, if you go to our Facebook page, Two Rivers Tavern, we have all of our events and just click on the link for the ladies night and it has right there you can purchase it also for the midget wrestling as well oh, go into the link and everything's right there and you can pre-purchase it'll be cheaper if you pre-purchase there's vip packages so there's a lot for you to get so i know you want the vip of course yeah of course <laughs> exactly i mean well, you can't go wrong so uh no that sounds great so we talked about the next video uh what else you got coming up so after the mail review that friday following we have hell mary's Everybody is well known in that we have Spade, who is very well known, base Rene Castillo. So they will be the first time at Two Rivers. Oh wow! Yeah. And the following day on Saturday we will have the Bad Boys. Everybody knows who the Bad Boys are. They've been around for a while, so they're going to come back. They always bring a great crowd, a great show. So, so it's always like a great lineup. Two Rivers, nice lineup. Always. So I mean, it's going to be so busy. For oh yeah, there's so much more. Well, I mean, to kind of close it up, I think that your tavern, I mean, my wife, Savannah, I love her to death. She supported me through all this stuff, and sometimes she doesn't let me sleep on the couch. Uh, you support Red and Gold. You know, you support a lot of the things that, that, that we believe in. Uh, and so, personally, I just want to thank you, the owners. I know you prefer them as mom and, mom, mom and, and dad. Mom and dad. Our interactions with them has always been pleasant. I mean, they've always been so just fair and, and honest and just you just can't find that nowadays in today's society yes. so uh let me just please thank them uh and personally for my wife and i just want to thank them because they've been awesome to us all right so we want to end this uh, episode of uh the world den and uh i want to thank again friends of children tex the mother chapter san antonio and also tiffany who came out here and, and wanted to tell a little bit about her uh, bar. And, uh, these are great people, great causes. I look forward to going to these events. Thank you guys again. I really appreciate it. God bless both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right.